Build a highly profitable real estate machine with explosive, exponential growth that works harder for you than you work for it while living a life by design. Breakthroughs are all around you, but you don't see them until now. Join Jason Williford here at The Ultimate Real Estate Machine as he converses with highly respected and world-renowned experts from inside and outside the real estate industry. You'll discover proven business, marketing, and sales strategies that transform you into the most trusted, dominant, and influential expert in your market, the preeminent agent. Each episode brings you one step closer to the highly profitable and fulfilling real estate business that you've been longing for. Here's your host, Jason Williford. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of The Ultimate Real Estate Machine. Have a wonderful guest on. Uh, she's a great friend of mine. Her name is Cindy Pressgraves. Uh, she's based out of Metro Atlanta. Uh, she's a certified luxury home marketing specialist. Uh, she's also earned the top 5% award for 2021. Uh, Cindy is also one of the contestants uh, and co-stars on the reality TV show, Beyond the Close, uh, which also features myself and features Kevin Harrington uh, from the original Shark Tank, which was the uh, co-founder of the Home Shopping Network and As Seen on TV. Uh, we also have special guests like Jay Abraham, uh, Michael Burnoff uh, is on the show. So uh, she is a contestant, but also so uh, she has uh, already published her own book. She's an author. Uh, she's a podcaster. She's a social media influencer. Uh, but she's also a top producing realtor that you know has been through a divorce. Uh, she's now a single mother of two. Uh, she does enjoy helping out other single parents, uh, other entrepreneurs, other real estate agents uh, that are single, that have family families, uh, to be a powerful business owner, but also be a wonderful parent uh, while they're doing so. Uh, and without further ado, welcome, Miss Cindy. How are you doing? Thank you, Jason. Great to have me on your podcast. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, wonderful. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit more about yourself? So I am a single parent. I, I've been in real estate for almost now in July will be officially four years. And I started real estate here in the state of Georgia. So I got my license in North Dakota. Uh, it took me eight times to pass my test. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I got a, a curveball thrown. And I'm like, hey, all of a sudden, I'm moving to Georgia. No friends, no family, no support whatsoever. Well, the kid's dad was sent overseas. And he stayed over there since then. But now it's growing my business. How do I get into, you know, real estate? And that's how my book is about. It's just like, how do you get into real estate? How do you start? Because I was lost. I had no idea. I thought there was like one, one brokerage. I had no idea there was different brokerages or anything. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have anybody to tell me how do I even start, what to do, how to get clients. I do have a background in sales, but... I know that was enough, but it wasn't that much because real estate is a totally different ball game. And you have to be really creative. You have to find if you think there's not an answer, there's an answer and there's always a way. Yes, ma'am. Uh, love that. One thing that really stood out is it took you eight times to pass your final exam. And my thought, my next thought was, is what if you would have get, given up on the seventh attempt? Or the fifth attempt. Uh, so what has that taught you? And that has, you know, I've, I've had some, I've seen genius, like almost genius level people that can pass the test and like, or pass, go through the whole course in like one week, pass the exam, uh, but they're not successful in real estate. Sometimes they, sometimes, not everyone, but sometimes they could be super over analytical. And sometimes it honestly seems like it's more common that if it takes a couple of times before passing the test, that agent really ends up becoming even usually more, it's a more successful type characteristic. What's your thoughts on that? Um, it is most likely the determination and the perseverance of keep on going. Like it was like that one point I kept on losing that one point. It was in the state side. It was the, the uh, national side. And I waited a full year before I actually took the test after the course. 
which is a big mistake because I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do real estate. This is not because I was afraid, but every single thing that I've gone from the process that I actually started from my real estate career, that means 2017 on taking the test, taking the course. If it wasn't for my, for my brother and actually I'm going to say this, my ex-husband, I mean, they actually pushed me. They actually believed in me and I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have any confidence that I would make it in real estate because it's scary to get into a hundred percent commission. Be like, um, where am I going to get the people? Where am I going to get the houses? And especially how this market is is crazy. I mean, yes. I, I mean, it's like, you got to be creative and how do you get creative and how can you be successful is communicating and having a good relationship with those people. It doesn't matter who it is. You can't see another real estate agent as your competition, if not as your as your colleague, because at the end of the day, you both are going to either meet in the field someday or you guys are going to help each other to make that transaction happen. I agree. And so, you know, what was it like uh, when you were brand new in real estate? If you can go back to uh, you being brand new in real estate, you've already achieved, you finally got your license, You that resilience that you had, that perseverance, you got your license, but now you're brand new in real estate and it's 100% commission. And we all know that, you know, there's an over 80% failure rate that a first year agent that's going in full time won't make it to year two. Uh, what was it like and what did you learn brand new in real estate? So something that I have not mentioned. So for the first year and a half in my real estate career, I was a little bit laid back because I did have a husband back then and he paid all the bills. So that was like, okay, you know what? I don't have to really worry. I don't have to really work that hard. But during my first few months, it was a little bit frustrating because I wanted more knowledge. I didn't know where to go. And this is my whole, like, how do I get into real estate thing? I didn't know about coaches. I thought coaches were like, oh, you know what? You can't get a coach until you're into a certain level. That is not true. That's my ignorance as me as a new agent. It's like, oh, you know what? It's just like, oh, I don't know. I can't know about the contracts because that's what the, because I was in a team. Oh, that's what their, their transaction coordinator did. Oh no, you need to learn about contracts in and out because you're going to be writing the contracts and you better be darn sure that you actually learn about every single detail because you don't never know what's going to happen. And you need to know your contract. I mean, from like the palm of your hand. So that's another thing. And then Whenever I got into like the first few months, it's like I was cold calling. I was doing, okay, I don't know if you guys remember, you know, this thing called the uh, uh, yellow pages or white pages. (laughs) I was calling residentials, you know, that thing, you know, that thing that actually comes in a paper. Yes, that's (laughs) what I was doing. I was cold calling, but I was cold calling probably, I mean, I would, I was cold calling five, five hours a day. Wow. And I was like, keep on, like, I would keep on following up, following up, following up, following up. That's one thing that most brand new agents won't do. And you did it and you're still here standing. And then not only that, handwritten letters. And I still remember this, like, I, I and my team leader, like, I would tell him, hey, you know what I'm doing? Like, hey, this is Cindy. Just give me a call back. I would give them my phone number. I wouldn't say anything about like, if I was in a real estate, nothing. I'm like, hey, I just have a few questions about your house. Just give me a call back. And they will call me back. But then if I couldn't get a hold of them, then, and it was a do not call, then I would go ahead and write handwritten letters. And I still do that. And that's something more powerful than anything. Now I have completely, now I have more confidence in my real estate career. I'm a little bit more experienced, let's put it that way. But now I do social media videos that has helped me create, become a social media influencer. Okay. I know this is not much but I've been hitting it hard with YouTube shorts and YouTube videos. But now I have 89 subscribers. Hopefully by the end of the year, I have over a thousand, but you know, TikTok, Facebook reels, Instagram reels, everything being authentic is actually what's going to take you being outstanding completely. Even on my uh, Google business page that has developed me and helped me grow so much. Even Pinterest, Snapchat. Okay. People Snapchat is not only for one thing. It's for many other things. It gets you out there. Your Snapchat map is really, really important. You leaving reviews and comments on different places, especially local businesses, that's also going to help you like, oh, wait, this is a contributor. She's been here. Take pictures and all that. Mm -hmm. Some people say you're always on social media. 
Why am I in social media all the time? Because I want you to see me every there, everywhere. I want you to get sick and tired of seeing me. But you know what? It's actually omnipresence. Yes. It's funny because people will actually follow what you say. You you're becoming the trusted person in your neighborhood, in your area. Okay. For example, a few, this is like last week, last week or two weeks ago, I actually had my air ducts cleaned. My neighbor next door, they actually had their air ducts cleaned today. So that is, what is that telling you? That little thing, people are going to listen to you. You're becoming the influencer, even in my neighborhood. Okay. I don't know my neighbors. I don't know everybody in my neighborhood, but everybody knows me. They see, Oh wait, you're the girl that, Oh yeah. Yeah. I know your kids. I know. Yeah. They know everything about me because that's actually building them. They're they're seeing me all the time. Let's talk about homes and exemptions. Let's talk about values of your home. Definitely. But let's go ahead and talk about different things. You want to educate your people, your, your clients, your, your neighbors. It doesn't matter who it is, even though they go with another agent, just educate them because that's going to be like, wow, she does know she does have the knowledge. And if you don't know, research, read, keep up with the trends. It doesn't matter what it is. You're, you're being the preeminent agent, which is chapter four in the book. Uh, and that's what the podcast is about, is about building a real estate machine that works harder and harder for you versus you having to work harder and harder for it. And you're setting yourself up as the preeminent agent. Uh, and how do you become, uh, and you are the preeminent agent, how do you become the trusted expert? It's by what you're doing, educating the consumer. Wonderful job. Hey, uh, how how have you been able to go uh, so quickly uh, from because you've been in the business just a couple of years. But last year uh, you wrapped uh, 2021 up with over 12 million dollars uh, worth of uh, business as an independent agent. Uh, how were you able to go from zero to over 12 million in annual sales with an, being an independent agent? just you out there selling, which is magnificent. It was basically like, I started hitting it hard. Like social media has helped me a lot, believe it or not. Be like, Hey, you're wasting your time in social media. No, not at all. More likely posting on my Facebook page on my neighborhood Facebook page. Like, Hey, you know what? Uh, giving them the uh, marketing updates. My web- having a really good website is really important because that actually builds presence. Reviews are really important too. Following up with people, sending out like letters to expires, FISBOs, p- database. You got to follow up with their database all the time and referrals, referrals. What was your mental breakthrough? Because, you know, they say, they say that, Success is 80% of your psychology, which I disagree with that part. Just part of that, that it's close to 100%. It all starts out in between your ears. So surely your own psychology had to change within yourself uh, to go from that person that you was uh, before you got your license that, hey, I really don't have to sell real estate to now I have to sell real estate because I have two boys uh, to support and myself to support. And you're just buy- you're buying a brand new home and congratulations on that. But what had to shift for you uh, psychologically to get to where you're, you're at now? So it, that is very, a very interesting factor. So when I started in real estate, you are what you attract. Your mental, your energy, your positivity, your negativity is what's going to make you. If you think that you are in a negative position, forget about that. You're going to attract negativity. And I mean, it's, it's basically once your mind shifts completely changes and you see everything in a positive way as a learning experience and to make you a better person, it actually helps so much. So I did have a struggle back in 2000. Last year was a year for me to heal, to heal and find mm-hmm. myself after, after a breakup. And before that, it was a divorce. So, I mean, I had been lingering one thing after the other but you know it's like I proposed myself that I wanted to be a millionaire okay so I started putting like writing down my goals I created my vision board you might find it silly but it is not silly it is not silly at all it is not 
I see this, the, the picture of the, like, I have two pictures for the houses that I wanted. And I'm like, you know what? I want that. I want that. I want that. And you know what? It actually manifests, but you got to put the work in. You got to believe in that because <laughs> I mean, if you're going to sit down and be like, you're going to expect it just to come in. No, nothing's going to come into. No, it's not. And I still, I'm still saying. I agree with you. The world, it just does not manifest like, uh, I'm 99% of the time, the world just does not manifest like what you want without taking action to get what you demand out of your life. I, and I totally agree with that because whenever I, I mean, it, it was like, I, I learned so much and I've grown so much since my first divorce. Well, since my divorce, my kids, and I always said that I wanted to put my kids in private school. All right. My ex-husband would scoff about it. Like, Psh. Okay, that's expensive. And it's funny because before I had moved to Georgia, I had walked into that school, the ones that my kids are in, and I'm paying for that my own on my own dime. You know, this is for me, that is like I was so freaking proud of myself. Wonderful job. So it's basically like a scare. You went from a, a little bit of a scarcity mindset uh, to abundance. And now you live in an abundance and you believe that you can versus believe, think that you can. That is correct. And no matter what position I am or situation I am, I'm like, you know what? I don't think about negative thoughts. I'm like, it's all, it's going to work out. Don't worry. Something's going to happen that is going to help me along the way. And if it doesn't work out, then it's not meant to be, but something better is going to come along the way. That is a mindset, the mentality you should always have. It doesn't matter. Like, Oh, you know what? I, I, I like, okay. Back when I was 20, 21, I had an accident. I was going to be, um, I was about to go into training to get commissioned to be an, um, an air force officer. Oh, wow. But I, I fractured three bones and I was like, okay. So, I mean, I guess this is not the time. And every time I would apply to be an, uh, an air force officer, it wasn't right. It wasn't the right path. It wasn't meant to be. So with the house that I'm buying now, I mean, we're talking about this beautiful dream home. It is beautiful. I'm actually upgrading. It is my first personal home that I'm buying by myself. And you might be like, but haven't you owned your own house? Is it okay to, because I think even the price point's amazing. My mother was a single mother and she did everything that she, uh, she became a single mother after two divorces. But she did. I remember her buying her first home and she worked her tail off for it, working two jobs. And it was amazing what she done. It's amazing what you're doing. But is it okay to mention, like, even what price point that you're buying your home in? (laughs) Okay, I guess so, right? Um, If it's personal, don't worry about it. It's a. I think uh, it's amazing and inspiring. Just don't check my net worth, okay? (laughs) I'm just kidding. so it's uh it's it's over almost six hundred thousand dollars, and this wow. is on my own. This is me paying for it, you know, out of my own. That's pocket success. Business. You but you you've earned that. Yeah, but not only that, but I ordered my hot pink Tesla too, my Model X pink text, my Model X hot pink Tesla. So I Heck mean, yeah. but these are things that. Yes, you can do it too. It doesn't matter what situation you are. Be like, oh no, she's just lucky. No, I, I, I work my butt off. Like when I'm and it's not just about the material things. You want a different life for your. It's not about the material for you. It's about creating. It's for you, and I know you very well. It's about what you want to provide for your kids that maybe you didn't have as a, a kid growing up. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. But I mean, it's just like, it's an accomplishment. Yes. But what's kind of really come down to, I was in a group last night and they're like, Cindy, your face lightens up every time you talk about real estate, not a relationship about real estate, but I'm passionate about what I'm doing, but I want to help people. And that comes from the bottom of my heart. If you just get into real estate, just because of the money is not going to go anywhere. And you might be the crappiest agent, but are you really happy? Or are you just in it just to, just for the money? Keep in mind, educate your people, educate those potential clients. And if they buy with someone else, just follow up with them regardless, because you know what? They might just come back to you because you follow up. Mm. You're Amen. in their face. You're originally from Puerto Rico. And one of the things that I really 
because in Miami Beach, there's uh, a lot of Latin people here. And I really appreciate like and a lot of, you know, I've made a lot of great uh, Latin friends, Latinas, Latinos, and I just really appreciate like their work ethic, you know, their values, morals. Uh, and I'm, I guess, maybe generalizing, but in a good way. Do you think some of that affects like how you do business, like things that you learned uh, growing up as a kid? So let me tell you, originally I was born in Texas. I was raised in Puerto Rico and I was raised in Peru. So I'm half Peruvian, half Puerto Rican. But mm. um, I think it has to do how was how I was raised. I was raised in a family that actually my dad always worked. And that's mm-hmm. how I became a workaholic. I mean, yes, I'm a workaholic. And my kids even tell me, mommy, you work all the time. And this is what I was explaining to my son last night. It's like mommy has to work because mommy only has one income. And in order for Mm. me to provide for you guys, I mean, I don't have that help of mommy and daddy. But, Mm. you know, that's explaining. But that's how I grew up. Even though I had a mom and dad, my dad was always gone. My dad was I mean, we were always working in his business. I mean, Saturday, Sunday, Monday after after work and all that. It was working. I mean, what kind of business was it? If you don't mind asking, he has, I'm still involved with their business too, but he had a plumbing and electric supply company. Love it. And it's funny because it has to do with real estate, but it's in the back the housing the industry. industry. Yeah. So it, it, it's yeah. interesting because I'm like, Oh wait, yeah, I remember. So now I understand this. My but- first job, I was 14 years old, framing houses in construction during the summertime, oh, wow. which was not an easy, I learned what I did not want to do for the rest of my life. Cause that's some, but you also appreciate those people that do that on a day-to-day living. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's tough work. It um, is. And plumbing and electrical is as well too. Hey, what would you say is your favorite part about the book, the ultimate real estate machine? Do you have I like really, a favorite section or chapter? I really like, I mean, it's not only the section, I would say it's the whole book. I don't have a favorite part. But what I really, really do like about the book is the whole comparisons about the businesses like Domino's, like um, McDonald's. I mean, I know you love that McDonald's. I can't remember the movie with Ray Kroc, the founder. Yes. He yes. loves that movie. And I remember I, I, I watched it with you and it was like, hey, you know what? This has so much sense. And every single. So the ultimate real estate agent. You can use it not only for real estate, but it actually diversifies in in any type of business. So that's the thing. It's all about customer service. How are you actually being the preeminent Mm -hmm. person or business person in your industry? How are you actually being different? You know, and that's what's really important is being above and beyond, but also, you know, being different. Love it. Uh, not having to be status quo, which uh, goes back to Steve Jobs. Uh, one of my favorite sayings was a speech that S- Steve Jobs gave, which is the crazy ones. And, you know, being different, not feeling that you got to uh, be in the status quo and be a part of the herd like everyone else, which there's over 1.6 million real estate agents nationally in America. And if you're like every other agent, you're a commodity. So you got to be able to break through that. And, you know, going to, you know, you're on the, the TV show Beyond the Closing. We mentioned earlier, you're right now within the challenge, the 90 day sprint to the finish. Chapter two about the book is, you know, unleashing the creative genius within you. And I'm paraphrasing, but what are, and it's all about mental breakthroughs, having mental breakthroughs versus having mental breakdowns. Uh, So what are some breakthroughs that you've been having during uh, the challenge while being on the TV show? Because you're learning a lot very fast, but so you're you're taking your game to the next level. Uh, You'll look back Hopefully, because I've uh, that's been my vision is that all these contestants will look back a year from now, two years from now and be like, dang, I can't believe how much I learned that collapsed time for me in a very short time frame. Uh, and it gave me breakthroughs with, in my business that will last forever. So is there any particular breakthrough that you've had? What I did like about the like what I really like about the book and about the the whole beyond the you know, the close is that the breakthrough is the strategics, the referral strategies, 
But not only that, you actually have to get involved in your community. And that's what I was like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? I'm new to the area, but I'm promoting my own town. Yes, this is my town, mm -hmm. Hall County. I live in mm -hmm. Gainesville, but I love mm -hmm. Gainesville too. You know, from Flowery Branch mm -hmm. to, you know, Murrayville. But it's getting integrated, mm -hmm. getting to know those people that are in the community, those business owners, you're promoting them. You want to support local. And that's what I'm actually doing. And that is one of the breakthroughs because through that, they're going to also provide you referrals and they're going to know the quality of agent you are. Uh, a try, uh, uh, and you just got a, uh, an appointment for a $5 million uh, listing uh, which is flat out amazing because we're not talking about Silicon Valley or Miami Beach, you know, uh, which is a beautiful lake listing. But, uh, you know, what's the average price point right now in Metro Atlanta? What about three fifty or so approximately? Three fifty uh, in Atlanta? Um, like I mean, all of Metro Atlanta. If we took all of Metro Atlanta, it's probably right around three fifty. Now, going into different niche markets, obviously into Beaufort or Gainesville, wherever uh, that price is going to go up, of course. But I'm talking about all of Metro Atlanta. But long story short, a five million dollar listing that is flat out amazing. And, you know, and that came from after unpacking that, that came from strategic business alliances and you being a giver versus a taker uh, because the world gives to the givers and takes from the takers. That's just how the world works. Uh, so amazing job there. Has there been a mental breakthrough like during the challenge like for you versus... Yeah. Uh, I would say it would be that and connecting with people, you know, being for the, keep on doing what I'm doing, but, you know, elevating it to the max, you know, just being in everybody's face. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But Love helping it. people too, because it's also about giving and receiving and not expecting all the time that you're going to receive something because sometimes you don't, but you know what? The, the thing is that you already put that little, that little spark, that little um, nugget there. That's what leaving leaving a nugget. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's the show is not just about competing. Uh, actually one of the rules that you already know, and it hasn't aired yet, but it will air like podcasts will air after it's released, but the show is about preeminence. And one of the rules is breaking the strategy of preeminence disqualifies someone and it doesn't matter if they've sold a hundred million dollars worth of real estate in 90 days or five zillion dollars worth uh, that if they are not demonstrating preeminence being that uh, if it's not all about the client, if they have commission breath, if it's just shoving as many homes under contract in a short period of time, that is not what the show about show is about. The show is about preeminence. It's about inspiration. It's about impact and which is similar to what the book is about that you're also co-authoring uh, a book, your second book, because you already authored one book on your own, but you're co-authoring a book uh, that features Kevin Harrington from the Shark Tank as well. You know, and it's about being the preeminent agent in the market and uh, what you do that uh, separates you from the traditional real estate agent uh, that gives, gives your clients more value, whether it be home sellers, home buyers, investors, whatever it may be. Uh, have you started, uh, and you may have not just yet, but have you started thinking about you know, what you're going to be writing about you know, to help sellers and buyers? Because that is the audience that'll be reading the book. There's so many things like uh, as me selling my home and buying a new property, I'm learning a lot about the emotions. Yes, I've been here three years and it's basically like walking people on how to sell your house and buying a home. Look, I mean, it, it's not about just, oh, no, you know what? I'm just going to put a sign in there and just no, 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 no,
when you hire a good realtor, I've been talking to myself because I know I'm a good realtor, but <laughs> I promise no, you're I'm an excellent. You sell yourself short, honestly, because you are you're not even in the good bucket like you're in the preeminent bucket, which is, you know, that's in the top one percent. Like your mindset is uh, in the top one percent, even though your your volume is getting there. Uh, your mindset is definitely within the top one percent, which will take you to the top. No, definitely. So my, the section that I'm right, I'll be, well, I'm writing is on how to walk yourself through emotions. Yes. You're going to put things away. Mm. You're going to start like, don't get attached. It's a new, (sighs) and I'm, I'm struggling with that. I honestly am struggling with that because look, that master closet. Oh my gosh. I mean, that master walk-in closet. I love it. Okay. So I have a thing for hot pink. But if you walk into my closet, they have hot velvet, hot pink velvet hangers, okay, throughout the closet. I mean, and it's it's every th- single little thing that I put, like that pantry, that mudroom. But I have to see it as I'm evolving and I'm going to a different level. Yes. I, I love that. Know. You're getting into the psychology of uh, how home sellers and home buyers think, which if I'm hearing you right, it sounds like. Uh, your goal is to try to break them out of their own psychology to educate them at the highest level so sellers can get the most money when they sell their home and buyers can also uh, find a, a great deal on the perfect home for them. Uh, that is correct. But at the same time, because I'm that preeminent agent, I don't want to sell your house only. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to say, Okay, so what are your alternatives? Let's go ahead and see if we can actually build you a real estate wealth portfolio. Do you just want to sell your house or do you want to build a real estate wealth portfolio? Meaning, let's go ahead and start building your retirement because right now, a few weeks ago, there's an article that actually went ahead and added real estate to your retirement. So what about building passive income or long-term income? How much do you really like on your house? How much do you own your house? Can we go ahead and do a cash out refinance? And I do have to say this. I'm not a lender, but can we do go ahead and do a, a cash out refinance, buy that house that you want and have that house pay for that new house? Let's go ahead and do that. That's what a lot of other agents don't, don't talk about. That's what actually stands me out from being that typical agent that just puts a sign and say, oh, no, we're just going to sell. No, 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 no. Honey, I'm quality, not quantity. So that's what you get with me. And this is what I'm actually walking through the whole situation because I'm going through growth. I'm going through, yes, I'm at a different level. I'm totally a different level, but I love your passion. I I want you to do the same thing too, because as a single parent, I don't have a sugar daddy that is going to actually help me out. I have to build my own wealth for my kids and for me. I love your passion. I got like, it, it gets me pumped up like all of your passion. Uh, what, what would you say that uh, you've been through elite agent referral mastery? What would you say is your favorite other than the strategy of preeminence? Because obviously I can tell how much that has been uh, become embedded within you over the past couple of months uh, that it seems like you're already a great agent going into the, the challenge. Uh, but it seems like more and more I see preeminence internalized within you. But other than that strategy, which is strategy number one of having a predictable referral system in your business, uh, is there another referral strategy that uh, you, that uh, is your favorite out of the 217? So right now, what I really, really do like about is, okay, so you're seeing me everywhere. I'm actually educating you. All right. So now I started sending postcards. So if you talk to me, I'm going to ask you for your birthday and I'm going to ask you for your address. And if you look, even if you don't buy with me, that is okay. But I want you to get your monthly home evaluation. So that's where you're going to see on a monthly basis, how much you're, I'll email it to you and I will go ahead and send it to you on a postcard. You'd be like, wait, what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is just with your phone, take a picture with it, and then ta-da, it pops up, which is really nice. So that's something that I'm also doing. I'm trying to stand out and being there like, hey, I haven't forgotten about you. And some people will just be like, when they meet me in person, because of the videos, 
they just feel like they've known me forever. Um, and I know that you are su- a super busy lady. I do appreciate you spending uh, your time uh, with us. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, I have one last question for you. Uh, what, what would you say that your business uh, looks like in the near future? And I mean the near future. If we we're sitting a year from now, opposed to where we're at right now in February of 2022, if we're sitting in February of 2023 and you look back on what you've accomplished over the past year, what do you see it looking like in the near future? I see myself with selling a hundred million in sales volume and probably growing my team by next year. Love it, girl. Well, that's simple and easy. See, not, nothing too complicated. Oh, and by the way, don't forget about me having my real estate retirement wealth portfolio. Let's say probably $10 million in real estate. Love it. Hey, great job. Hey, I really appreciate uh, you being on. And uh, is there anything else that you would like to add? No, I think that would be all. I mean, I really enjoyed ha- um, being here, part of the, your podcast and super excited, super excited about the TV show and yeah, and co-authoring with Kevin Harrington too. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great day, Cindy. Thank you too. Bye. That's it for this episode of The Ultimate Real Estate Machine. May your real estate machine be extremely rewarding, fulfilling, and life-changing for you and all the people that you impact. Claim those skyrocketing results that you demand from your real estate business. Subscribe to the show for more content like this at Ultimate Real Estate Machine, the podcast.com. And don't forget to leave a positive rating. Thank you for joining us. See you on the next episode.